Uh, good afternoon. This is the walkthrough and assessment solution for physical computing unit lesson seven, color LEDs. So I'm gonna walk through the lesson and do the assessment. Let's get started. So right off the bat, in the prediction uh, part, the, f the, the first level here, we're introduced to the color LEDs uh, command. And one thing to note as it says is that this command uses brackets and not parentheses. So if you're having bugs in your code, uh, check that you have brackets and not parentheses here. The other question that might come to mind is what is the number? Uh, as you probably have guessed, that refers to the uh, 10 different LEDs on board. Zeroth LED is the one that's in the upper left here. Then it goes counterclockwise around up to number nine. We have 10 LEDs, but take care that you're using zero to nine and not one to 10 to refer to them. So we're asked to predict and it looks pretty straightforward. We're turning on an LED, we're blinking uh, the next LED, we're setting the color to red for the third one and blinking it, and then the last one we're setting to purple. There it is. Okay, moving on. In the second level, we use the user interface to turn on a couple of LEDs on the bottom and turn them off, off and on. So we learned the on and off commands and put them in on event, event handlers. On level three, what do we do here? Uh, we set the rainbow or we just tried different colors. And I wanted to mention something about the colors here. So I'm gonna pause. I mentioned this in class, the colors that you can put in the quotes here aren't just our standard colors. Uh, these, this will take any HTML color name and there's 140 of them that you can choose from. If you Google W3 schools HTML color names, that's where I'm at right now. And it is just a page that has all of the names. It has the color example, and it has the, what do we call this? The hex code, the hex code for the color. So you can put any, you can put the color name, you can put the hex code in here, or you can use an RGB function uh, or command as well. That gives us 140 other options for colors. So the, the LEDs can make any of those colors. They can actually do more than 16 million colors. If you use the RGB, I'm not gonna go into that now, but you can get pretty much any color you want. And that also goes for the colors of the UI. Here. So uh, when you're in design mode and you're designing your elements for the, for the user interface, you can use any of those uh, 140 different color names. So there's quite a good palette here. Here was the debugger with the rainbows. So it shows up like in the picture. There it is. Just selecting LEDs and setting the color. Changing brightness. So here we're introduced to the intensity command we were asked to fix the medium button. So code the make the lights medium. And it looks like I made a mistake here. This last one should not be 100, but I set them at 50. So this is how we can control brightness. Medium, dim, medium, bright, and so on. The challenges were kind of fun. We changed colors with a toggle switch, red, green, stop, go, stop, go. We used buttons to control individual lights. We created an alarm clock. I used um, a little bit different code down here to shorten the process instead of having to go through all of setting all individual, like here are, here are 10 different commands we have to type in or copy and paste and then change the number in order to set all of these colors to red. And 
this does the same thing. It sets them all to green this time, but I'm, I, it turns them off, not sets them to green. This is a little bit different. This is this does the same thing. It turns all of the LEDs off one at a time. But instead of typing out 10 different commands, I use a for loop here. So that just loops through this turn off an LED command 10 times. And each time it puts in a different number for the variable T here. So starting at zero and going to 10, that's what the in the parentheses of the for loop we define a variable t set it to zero and we say keep looping until t uh, it, so long as t is less than 10 keep looping and this t plus plus is uh the same exact thing as your counter pattern that you learned it's the same thing as saying t equals t plus one so every time we go through the loop it increments t so the first time through t is zero the second time through t is one all the way up to nine, and then once it gets to 10, it exits the loop and turns the buzzer off. I'll mention this again when we get to the next level. We debugged a little program that goes, turns the left and right side, the LEDs on and off. I use toggle here, and let's head on to the assessment. So we're asked to create our own light pattern in this assessment. This app creates different light patterns on the circuit playground by pressing buttons on the screen. It already has one light pattern, which can be activated by clicking a button on the screen. Let's see what it does. So that creates a red, green, blue, red, green, blue, red, green, blue, red pattern. And we are asked to add our own button to the screen that creates our own light pattern, maybe colors of your favorite holiday, et cetera, et cetera. So we go to design mode, we add the button, giving it a meaningful ID, and then with the code, when the user clicks the button, a light pattern appears. We're gonna use an on event block for to capture the button click event on our UI, and we're gonna use color LEDs.color and color LEDs.intensity blocks to create the light design on the circuit playground. I added a Go Broncos button. I changed my ID from like button one or whatever to Broncos. I put go Broncos as the text. I just, I, you know, uh, played around with some of the properties here, the text color, background color, uh, border color, and so on, text size. So I created my button in design mode. And then in with the code, pretty straightforward. We're just using uh, setting the color with color LEDs color, and then setting the intensity with color LEDs intensity. I also made my pulse. So with the code, I was I just set every other LED to orange, blue, orange, blue, orange, blue, and you know, a color and intensity command um, over and over again. So red, green, blue. I had a pulse command here, uh, color LEDs dot pulse. So it was pulsing red and blue, which was kind of cool, but uh, it's not working well as I'm doing a screen recording. Um, I'm working on an old computer and it just can't, can't keep up. So it's getting strange output. So I took the pulse command out, but um, I wanted to mention again that we can, uh, you don't have to do this, but as an aside, uh, we can abbreviate this code and make it easier uh, simply by using a for loop. Because we're doing the same thing over and over again, we're just changing the number in the brackets here. So we can plop a variable into that spot and then just change the variable 10 times. To do that, we would say for, parentheses and let's define a variable e, uh, variable i equals zero uh, i equals zero semicolon you have to separate these commands inside of this parentheses with semicolons not commas and that's going to be for i when i is less than 10 we're going to be doing this and then we're going to increment it each time for our counter pattern i equals i plus one 
and then curly bracket, and then we put the commands that we want to be executed inside the for. So we're going to grab the first one, bring that up, and instead of the number here, we just put in i, i starting at 0 and going to 9 each time. And that should replace all of this code here. And achieve the same result. Let's see if I did it right. There it is. Uh, I forgot that we were changing the color uh, for every other one, so we got all orange. Interesting. I wonder if we could fix that by saying i equals i plus 2 and then duplicating this and changing this to blue and this would be i plus 1. So I'm not sure this is going to work, but let's try. Oh yeah, it worked. Um, so instead of I, uh, I equals I plus one here, I'm incrementing my uh, counter variable for my for loop by two, which means that when it's zero, it does color LEDs zero dot color in for I, puts zero in for I, puts zero plus one in here, so these are ones. So it goes one, it goes zero, one, and then the next time through the loop, it goes two, three, and then the next time four, five, and so on. Anyway, uh, if this doesn't make sense to you, don't use it right now. Uh, it's just another control structure uh, if you want to get fancy, but if it makes sense to you to do it, this way where you're writing out all the commands um, or copying and pasting, that's totally legit and I would go that route. Uh, I'm not going to do the challenges today. That's all for this one. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.